little drama already. Some Lance drama. Some Jordan drama. They asked Dusty the other day about Lance. They asked him, did he fail his physical? Is that why he's not here on the field? He's like, oh, no, he's doing all his work inside. Um, Got to have some drama with the Houston Astros. Got to have some uh, some discomfort with the Houston Astros. But, hey, well, they went. You've had less than a week's worth of practices and a lot of discomfort. What is a fair projection for Hunter Brown? Hunter Brown last season, as we know, Joel, did not have many – uh, didn't have many appearances in the bigs. Uh, had seven appearances. He started two games. He pitched 20 innings, 20 and a third. Had 22 strikeouts, seven walks, an ERA of .89. Uh, a very small sample, obviously. Uh, in the playoffs, he appeared in three games, pitched three and two-thirds, did not give up a run, struck out one, walked three. A little bit more command issues in the playoffs than what we saw in his few outings in the regular season. What is a realistic, fair expectation for the Astros rookie? I would say, I mean, here's the thing. I think he still has a slight advantage because most teams haven't seen him yet. And so from a pitching perspective, I think that does have a a little bit um, of cachet to it. I think it means a little something. But I think that overall, he's got a lot of learning and growing to do and understanding a full major league season in his first major league season. I'm not going to expect too much. I'm not going to expect those kind of numbers magnified by a full major league season because now we're talking about a Cy Young candidate, and I I just simply don't think he's there yet. I think that he's going to be uh, a 500-type pitcher, maybe a little better than 500 with the team that he's going out there with um, that's probably going to have a more realistic earned run average, probably hovering in and around four. Uh, I don't don't think it's going to be in the low threes or anything like that or lower than that. I think that he's going to go through the maturation process of his first big league season. I don't think he's going to be bad. I just don't think he's going to blow everybody's doors off. And I don't have too high of expectations because of it. What? Uh, so he's Jake Odorizzi. I think he's better than Jake Odorizzi. <laughs> Jake you. Odorizzi last year was one game above 500. He was 4-3 and three with a 375 ERA. Okay, then I think he's going to be two games over 500, and I think he's <laughs> I think he's going to have better statistics overall. The, uh, the the frustrating thing with over easy though was like he was so up and down. Like he would he would get shelled, go one time through the lineup, or he would pitch like six innings, one run, yep. and for, like he was he was very up and down uh, during his tenure with the Houston Astros last year. I think it's fair for Hunter Brown. Like the win loss record, I think is going to be better than like what he pitches to because it's a good team. Like at this team, the offense is going to save him. Uh, there's going to be times whenever he wins a game when he shouldn't. There's going to be times when he probably should have lost a game and he won't because uh, the offense will bail him out. Uh, I also don't expect him to start every day. Like there's some thought that he might be the guy that bounces back from the starting rotation to the bullpen and back and forth. I personally want to see a six man rotation. And if one guy's hurt, well, then you, you, you trim it down to a five man rotation. That, that's what I want to see with where all of these pitchers are. So I, I think he is going to be a starter, even in a, like, in a six man rotation. That's what I think that the Astros will do. And Big C told us that Dusty Baker said that at FanFest. We'll see if that comes to fruition. Um, I think he's going to have a sub-4 ERA. Like, Jose Arquiti last year, 394. Just mentioned over easy, 375. Luis Garcia had a 372. I think it's somewhere in that range, 375 to a 4 ERA range. And look, I expect Hunter Brown, at like, at the peak of his career, to be a like a, a sub-3.5 guy. I, I think he's going to be really good. But as a rookie, there's going to be some outings where he gets shelled. There's going to be some welcome to the big league moments. So I think his ERA is going to be somewhere between 3.5 to 4. Pretty wide range, but somewhere in that, in that uh, area. And I think he'll win, like, 10 or 11 games and lose like six or seven. So I'll say like 10 wins, seven losses, and I'll just call it a 375 ERA. I think that's a realistic expectation for Hunter Brown in his rookie year. Yeah, no, I think we're in the same ballpark. Like yeah. I said, you know, if you're a couple games above 500, it's basically because your lineup's really good and you're going to be in every ball game, even if you do give up some runs and get hit a little bit. Uh, this lineup is fully capable of keeping the team in the game. And in a lot of cases, you could backdoor your way into a win. Um, and I think even with the ERA, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to hover around four. You think he might be a little below that? I hope he is, and we'll see how everything goes. But again, he's also going to be the product of a system that's really, really good that's going to help him in a lot of ways. Defensively, they can be very good, but offensively is where he's probably going to capitalize the most because he's going to get wins sometimes where he maybe not des- doesn't deserve them because of how good this offense is. Yeah, but he's saying the 10 wins is a lot with a six-man rotation. Every Astro regular starter last year won double-digit games. Uh, Fromber, who started more games than anybody else, won 17. Uh, he started 31 games, though. But, like, if you just average out 162 games divided by six, it's 26 starts. Verlander won 18 games and 28 starts. Arquiti won 13 games and 28 starts. Luis Garcia won 15 games and 28 starts. And Javier, who had 25 starts, won 11 games. So... 
I think it's be- – yes, it is tough to get to double-digit wins with a six-man rotation. It's also easier to get wins when you have a really good offense. Yep. And I actually think the Astros' offense, if Jordan's healthy, is, uh, is going to be better this year than it was last I year. I agree. Yeah, I totally agree, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, look, you can get into some – you could start out getting your doors blown off and have a really, really bad inning, but know that this team's capable of a crooked number and putting it up quickly, and suddenly you're in the fifth inning of a ball game that's 8-6 to six or, you know, 6-5, to five, and you leave the game with the lead, and the bullpen comes in, shuts the door, you get a win. You didn't pitch worth a darn for the most of, most of the game, but your offense gave you a chance to win, and you did. And so I think he'll have a couple of those backdoor wins, and I think overall he'll have more wins than losses. But like I said, I'm not expecting him to continue to set the world on fire because teams are going to start to figure him out. They're going to get more tape on him. They're going to get more bats at bats against him, and they're going to understand what his best pitches are and when he throws them. Then it's up to him to make the next move to make more adjustments. I think that is critical, too, that we don't, like, we don't make the expectations unrealistic. He could be, he could be an all-star level pitcher at some point in his career more than likely will not happen as a rookie. Right. There's going to be a lot of moments throughout the year for Hunter Brown. Maybe it's maybe it's a like he runs into a rookie wall in June and his, he has three really bad starts in a row. I think we're going to see really good from Hunter Brown and I think we're going to have some rocky performances from Hunter Brown because he's a rookie. He's a rookie in Major League Baseball and that happens to rookies is that they have a little bit of struggles uh, throughout their rookie season. Now, I do think he's going to be a guy who strikes out about a dude printing. I think his stuff is really good. We saw it last year. I think the whole like Keith Law, he's only a relief I think he dispelled that notion a year ago. I think we see the, the beginnings of a strong career and a solid rookie year. Do you think it's realistic he could win rookie of the year in his first season? I don't think so. Not this year. No, I, I don't think it's realistic. I, I think it, it would be, again, it would be a, a nice kind of icing on the cake that you weren't expecting. But I, I don't think he can. I, I think that they're going to be, you know, a lot, a lot of young position players that are going to have good years that are going to get, because they play every day, they're going to get more love anyway. Um, but, yeah, I, I just, again, that does, that's not important to me. I just want him to be in a place where when we start hitting August and September, that he's in a groove, that, you know, he's figured out and what the league has figured out and made adjustments, and he's going to be a guy that can make a difference for you in the postseason, whether it's just sucking up innings or if it is a guy that could actually get guys out and, and do some things. That's That's your best hope for him. Sure, it would be icing on the cake if he was in contention for rookie of the year. I just don't see it. There's he's going to need a little bit of help. Uh, he's on the he's on the board, right? Like if you just look up the American League Rookie of the Year odds, he, he's on the board. Hunter Brown's on the board. It depends on where you look, uh, where you can get the best value. If you're really wanting to play this, like DraftKings has him at plus eight hundred, FanDuel at plus seven fifty, BetMGM at plus eight hundred, Caesars has him at plus fourteen hundred. So if you're going to play a Hunter Brown to win American League Rookie of the Year, figure out a way to place that bet on Caesars, where all of a sudden you're getting plus fourteen hundred value as opposed to plus seven fifty at FanDuel. Now I know I know it's tough in Texas. Uh, Gunnar Henderson is by far the favorite to win the American League Rookie of the Year in every single board that you look at. He's the you know, the infielder for Baltimore. They're, they're still trying to decide if they're going to play him at third base or shortstop, but he is the guy. He's the heavy favorite to win the American League Rookie of the Year. So if you if you have a Hunter Brown ticket to win, you're probably going to need Gunnar Henderson to have a you know terrible rookie season or probably have some sort of injury as well. Uh, Mazataka Yoshida, who's the the guy the outfielder that I really liked out of Japan, that yep. if they didn't sign Brantley, I wanted them uh, to sign Yoshida. He's a he's a favorite. Royce Lewis is somebody who's kind of has the same odds as Hunter Brown. Josh Jung. Uh, Josh Young, actually, he's uh, with the Rangers. He has some odds to win it as well. I don't think Hunter Brown's going to win it. I I think this is a year with a favorite, unless there's injury with Gunnar Henderson. Uh, I think Gunnar Henderson kind of runs away away with this. He's the guy that's got a suitcase full of clippings, too. He brings it all in in terms of whatever. He's got the reputation. He's last year's wit. Yeah, and and all of the writers are are enamored with this kid. The only way that I see Gunnar Henderson, barring injury, not winning the American League Rookie of the Year is if Masataka Yoshida is like a 320 hitter for Boston because he has the East Coast bias. Yeah. He's somebody who's, you know, from he's a, he's a Japanese import, so you're going to get a lot of popularity there. Like, if that guy's the truth, I could see him potentially but, winning but Rookie like of the Year. But, like, Gunnar could go through a, 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 an Alex Bregman start to his career, too, and, and that could be devastating for him. But you're right. The other thing is <laughs> look out for any young player playing for any East Coast team uh, uh, up in the, the Northeast because they will get so much extra love for everything they do because of the writers and the votes. So that, that's that got to be factored in. I will say, I think the Astros have had a top five Rookie of the Year finalist the last four seasons, five seasons. Last Pena, year with Pena. Luis Garcia, uh, Christian Javier, Jordan Alvarez, 
So at least the last four years, they've had someone finish in the top five. Yeah, I mean, so, it's been the pipeline. The so Ashes it, have been a pipeline, and it's and it and it's got to go. I mean, there's a, a gap, but you have your Springer years, Correa years. Like, I actually think that's one thing the Astros, the the media gets right about the Astros is they recognize how good their rookies are on a pretty consistent basis. Like, I think he's got a good shot. I think the bigger thing on that too is is the fact that they don't come in with the kind of clippings and and, and uh, attention and exposure that a lot of these other guys do that were high round picks that everybody's been looking at ever since they joined someone's farm system. I mean, they were basically under the radar until they weren't. And then all of a sudden they just exploded on the scene. And then they, like you said, then they ended up getting votes for rookie of the year. The other reason why I wouldn't vote, I wouldn't bet, bet money on Hunter Brown to win is because I, I have this assumption that at some point the, the six man rotation will go to a five man rotation and he'll be the odd man out. And he'll be the Christian Javier now of he'll go to the bullpen when they have five guys they're rolling with, and when someone gets hurt or they go to a six man, he'll come out of the bullpen. Well, that's, I just I don't see the Astros doing a five man well, unless somebody's hurt. So here's where I, that's where I said though. To, to the point I said earlier, I think if they get close towards the end of the season, if they know that they're setting themselves up just to prepare for the playoffs, they got to shrink it. Then they'll shrink the rotation, and with shrinking the rotation, they're going to look to define roles. For the guys that aren't going to be in the rotation, and they'll start using, like we talked about last year, if they're going to call up Brown late in the season and he's going to be on the playoff roster, then he better start getting used to getting up in, in the yeah. bullpen because he's going to need to get a couple guys out. That also assumes Lance McCullers Jr. is going to be healthy. 